Okay, well, this is Lyle. I was just talking about it. He's, uh, he's, uh, has the same name as my chiropractor. And I'm gonna hold on to this because I want to keep you in the shot for a minute or two. This is Lyle's roadmap to success. We're adjusting the camera, so I'm just going. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, in the, uh, he's, uh, I, we started off talking about exercise. So I think exercise is a huge contributing factor. The Guardian's here do a really good job. He goes for about three miles of walks a day, but it's still probably not enough. So we talked about keeping an exercise journal and I went over some creative ways of exercising it. One is throwing up treats up and down the stairs. We were doing it on this stairs, but it's close to the uh, kennel above, which is where it triggered a little bit of a resource guarding issue. There we go, that's what I wanted, buddy. And so I would recommend doing it on the other stairs. I'm guessing to the basement. Yeah. So practice on those stairs. Um, so for the, uh, the creative exercise, throwing the treats up and down the stairs, uh, Canada, Mexico are the command words. Uh, eventually you would just do just for Mexico and not for Canada, because he should come back, back to you automatically. But right now, just do them both. I usually, if you're tearing them in half, I, I use the tear and half treat for the top and I throw the full treat. Otherwise you get remnants and crumbs all over the place. Um, another thing we talked about was getting him a doggy backpack. Uh, you can put some, some weight, uh, like just uh, a bottle of water. I had a bottle of water somewhere. Um, that's all right. Uh, but yeah, it's up there, out of reach. Um, so a bottle of water or some bags of sand or whatever it is, that makes the walk a little bit more efficient. We, he likes to fetch, fetch is a great way to burn energy. Um, and also exercising him before a walk is a great way to set him up for success. So we take him out and play fetch for five minutes, give him about 10 minutes to recover so he shouldn't be dry panting. And once he stops doing that, then take him for the walk. And you'll find you'll have a much more productive walk. Um, let me see. Um, uh, Put in the exercise journal not only the quantities of how many up downs the stairs, if he doesn't de demand barking, which he did a couple times, if we have a, a resource guarding incident, write down the time and a little bit about what happened. It doesn't have to be a ton. You, uh, the guardians here are used to journaling things, so after a while you get more efficient on what you need to actually put down. But you get to the point where, again, you're able to start putting in uh, the thing that you, uh, the data you need, and you start seeing, you know what, we, every time he won't get, it goes longer than four hours between exercise, that's when he has a problem. So now we can beat him to the punch. Um, so exercise is gonna be a huge thing for him. Um, I also went over my favorite way of, of, of uh, exercising dogs, which I call dog skiing. And I think he would be amazing for it, and it would be a double positive in his case. He hates having his nails trimmed. Guardians are actually looking for a new vet because the vet that he went to, they went to to try to trim his nails, pin him down, did alpha rolls, all this stuff that we don't do that a vet shouldn't do. Um, and sometimes they're just like gonna get through it. Well, now he doesn't wanna go to the vet. So um, trimming his nails is something that dog skiing will do where you put a harness on him and have him pull you for a couple miles and it's very efficient. So start that exercise journal, keep it for a month. Remember to, at the end of the day, give him a letter grade, write it on the page, A through F. And if he did anything other than A, the next day play around, give him a couple more repetitions, or if it's a low grade, a whole extra exercise. Eventually they come up with the right amount of exercise for him. Uh, remember when he starts doing the circles, it's a neurologic uh, tick that we don't want him to practice. He starts uh, pacing, any of those things, get him some exercise right away. We want him to stop those behavior patterns. The more we interrupt it by giving him some proper exercise. And another way you can do is set games. With these pacing, that might be a good one to do instead of uh, the running up and down the stairs, is having uh, go to the next room and find five hidden treats. Um, let me see. Um, there were a couple other things I wanted to cover. Uh, we went over a focus exercise um, that, you have videos on my website for that. Remember to get to within a 15 seconds focus within seven days, but if you work hard, you probably should be able to get there in a couple days. Um, and then you're gonna practice it out in your deck and go back to one second, one second, and get to the point where you're 15 seconds outside in the deck in the backyard within about three to four days. Then you wanna do it on a walk, but you on the walk, now we're triggering it by saying the verbal command, and we're only gonna say it when there's no dogs or people around. I remembered what I was talking about earlier. Right? There's a book called Psycho-Cybernetics that see if you tell yourself, I can't remember, then your brain will stop looking. I said, I will think about it, and my brain kept on working. What I was gonna do is one of the things he did, he's responsive of, he's very getting very, very protective of the house. I think a lot of that is because he doesn't have a lot of rules or structure. And so uh, he doesn't see his guardians as acting like leaders, so I think he thinks that he needs to protect them. So a lot of times with dogs like this, what I do is, So I want to practice knocking on the door, even though he saw me do it. Now he didn't, he'll have a better response if he doesn't see you do it, but he usually, he was running to the door. So when there's nobody out front, there's nobody coming to the door, reach over and knock on the door, on the wall and make it mimic a doorbell or somebody coming in the door. Don't tell him anything, don't get up and go to the door. And he goes to the door and he barks and he does all this protesting, but nobody comes to the door. After a while he gets less and less reactive for that. Same sort of principle like his guardians uh, say, should we take it for 
they're whispering and spelling it out. I would say walk a hundred times. Hey buddy, you wanna go for a walk? You go for a walk? Walk? After a while, it, you desensitize them. Same sort of thing with this. So um, I think I'm gonna come back and work on some other stuff and remind me when I come back, I can show you how to get him to stop barking when the doorbell run, rings. And I could also go over how to teach him to be calm when you leash him up. I think those things will be very beneficial for him. I would recommend uh, uh, not using the halty, but if that's what you have to do for control for now, that's fine. But definitely don't do that when you're dog skiing. I think if you exercise them ahead of time and pick and choose your battles, so you're not out walking when there's a lot at 4.30 or to 5.30 when everybody's walking their dog and you see a lot of people, you get better uh, some benefits. Um, we also talked about uh, rules and uh, some structure. For rules, we talked about not being allowed in the, any furniture. Get those X mats and put those on any furniture that he gets on so it holds a spot for you. Uh, remember, the rules should be in place for a minimum of 66 days or as long as the problem is still going on. So considerably longer than that, most likely. Um, shouldn't be allowed in the kitchen when we're preparing food. Shouldn't be allowed around us when we're eating food. Um, I have an exercise now. We can go over that on the next uh, session as well. Uh, we just kind of got a little bit of a way uh, talking about all the stuff that he has gone through, going on. Um, make him sit before you go through a door. Go to the door, tell him sit once. If he doesn't sit, walk away, sit down somewhere nearby, and don't look at him at all. Wait for 60 seconds, then tell him to sit again. If he doesn't sit this time, walk away for two minutes, next time four minutes, eight minutes. Each time you walk away, make sure, make sure you sit down. And as soon as he, you go to the door and say sit, and he sits, fly the door open. And I would do that for going for walks, um, you know, uh, not for the kennel because of his issues, but I normally would say for the kennel. Uh, if there's stairs in the house, bedrooms, and all the rest of that stuff, uh, the guardians, I believe, you make him sit before you cross streets. That's always a good thing to do. And periodically, that's a great thing to do starting off the walk. A lot of times what I do is I warm the dog up. I have 10 treats, and I take, at first I take only up to five steps. And I take five, and I stop short, and I tell the dog sit. When he sits, I give him the treat, say sit, then I take it up to five steps again. So you give him 10 treats right out the gate out of your, after a while he's like, I'm not looking at anything else, I'm looking at you, are you gonna stop? After a while you'll stop and he'll automatically sit down. And at that point then you can start uh, adding in more distance instead of 10 steps up to, uh, up to, instead of five up to 10 steps or between once between every driveway or whatever it is. He gets to the point where again, he's starting to listen and pay attention to you as opposed to us. Um, now we, uh, we also, uh, let me see, other rules. Um, uh, the humans are gonna eat before they feed him. Um, and when he eats, does he eat all his food? Okay. Uh, come up with a, and then uh, come up, use passive training, come up with a command word for eating, for drinking, for pottying, for it, name all your toys. Every time he comes to you, pet him and say sit, or expect him to say come. If he sits near you, pet him and say sit. If he lays down, pet him and say down. Um, I taught my dog to stretch this way. Every time he stretch, I pet him and say stretch. I call that passive training. Uh, we also want our petting with a purpose. Petting with a purpose is if he initiates contact, he nudges me, or I want to pet him, I'm going to give him a counter order, tell him to sit or lay down or do something. Then I'm going to pet him under his chin, say sit, and only the word sit, and I can pet him as much or as little as I want, once to infinity. After a while, he'll start coming and sitting in front of us to prepay for the attention. Now he's uh, providing us more of a subordinate pot body mechanic and posture, and it helps him feel less authoritative. <coughs> Um, and again, even if you want to pet the dog, make sure you make him do something. Now I use paycheck as an uh, indicator that if I suspect someone in the room forgot to pet with a purpose, that person has to stop petting, do it, right, do, do it what, uh, repeat the process, then tell the person, actually I did it right, you just missed it, because we won't realize how often we do pet without a purpose. I use testify as my word for, uh, for passive training. So if I, somebody says testify, you look at the dog, and whatever the dog's doing, you just pet it. If it's standing there, you assume he came and pet him and say come. Be sitting, put him and say sit, and so on. Um, after a while, he starts emulating those behaviors because those behaviors are the things that get your attention. Um, and he'll start offering them more and more. And again, sitting is more subordinate, so it helps him kind of adopt the, the, the appropriate mindset. I also showed him a, a, a focus, a two focus exercises. We showed the traditional, the focus that I do where we hold the tree on the knee that we talked about earlier, we also went over another exercise. Now this one I want you to do in the house, remember you have to prime the clicker, by the time you watch this you probably should have primed the clicker, so just remember to prime the clicker two or three more times, about 10 treats, half treats, throw them on the floor, click every time that he licks it up. Just go to Amazon or go to Petco, get a $5 clicker. Um, let me see, so basically the idea is we throw the treat, he goes and licks it up and I'm watching him. As soon as he turns around and gives me, he looks at my face, I click, then I give him a treat. So I'm gonna do this in the house. Do it with like about five to seven treats and do it in different places in your house. Do it a couple times tonight and maybe once or twice tomorrow. And then after that, do it three or four times in the house. Then take him in the yard, put him on the leash 
and don't throw the treat. Just go in the middle of your yard, just stand there. And as soon as he looks at you, click, and then give him the treat. So we're not throwing the treat at this point. We're just rewarding him for coming, checking in, and paying attention to us. There's a lot of distractions outside. Most dogs just, they're on, there's a hunting dog. I'm looking for prey and all the rest of this stuff. I'm on guard duty. I'm not, you're, you're like 12th on my list of things to do. Well, if every time I, somebody looks at me, I give them a $100 bill, they're going to start looking at me a lot, and that's what we're, what we're essentially doing for the dog. So this will help him to stop focusing on everything else and focus on you. And you can use the focus exercise, what I showed you with the, holding the treats to your nose, on walks where you see he starts to stare. Just like the video we did above, before he reacted to me, he kind of froze and kind of bared his teeth a little bit. He gives warning signs before he reacts. The whole point on walks is to get him out of that trouble before he feels the need to react. The more that he sees that we're getting him out of trouble, so he doesn't have to, that, I don't like the man with the beard coming towards us. Well, that's okay, buddy. You told me that you didn't like it. Focus, let's turn and walk this way. And the more that he sees that you're getting him out of trouble, the less he feels it's his job to do. All right, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, we went over the, uh, the, I really only went over two of the four escalated consequences. The next time we come back, remind me, and we'll refresh that, and I'll show you how to use those consequences to keep him away from your kitchen or you when you're eating food or the rest of that stuff. Um, is there anything else we went over that you want me to cover? That's better. That's better. Okay. So for the video above, practice that one a couple of times a day. Recreate it. And again, he seemed to be reactive as soon as I got to the edge of that carpet deal. All right, let me give you one little piece. I got two pieces here left for the parade. Um, and so the idea is uh, maybe try walking uh, there. Throw the treat, turn and walk away to, I can't remember where the book was I was seeing. Um, and then turn around, grab another treat, walk back and do that. And then you might like get on the bed, sit on the bed, roll over the bed a couple times and walk from the other side by the bathroom. Approach, throw the treat. Do that like maybe three or three treats on this side, roll over, do three treats on this side, do it back three treats this way, three treats this, this way. And then I would throw a treat out of the kennel and then throw one to the hallway and then one down the stairs like I did in the video to get him out of there. Once he goes down the stairs, close the kennel door and then you can stay up there. I would probably want you to go down. Once he's left, he should be out of that mode, but if you do run into trouble where he gets growling like that, then maybe you throw a treat down the stairs, only do it when somebody else is downstairs. When he gets downstairs, maybe you leave a bully stick at the bottom of the stairs. And that, um, uh, and that way he has something that, oh, I'm, I'm not gonna go back up there, I'm gonna chew this thing. I don't wanna be in the kennel anyways. And then you can come down safely. Um, I gave you the card to the green spot. Go to the green spot. Get, these are bully bites. You can get bully uh, sticks are probably more appropriate for him. The odor-free ones, like I said, they're washed and clean, so they won't smell when he farts them out. And his chewing on it, so you might want to get some of those. But I would probably, before your resource guarding issue, I would probably have one so that at the end of each one of those, he gets that, ex at the bottom, he gets down there. Again, it's another reason for him to really like the exercise. Good things happen. Okay, uh, well, now I'm, I'm about to sum up, and I need you over here. Uh, Lyle, Lyle, come buddy. Well, you'll get that one. This is Lyle, and this is Lyle's roadmap to success. Lyle, <laughs> looks like you're smoking a cigar now. Come here, buddy. Come. Oh, that's a good drop. Drop. There's another one here. Get this one. Well, this is Lyle, and if I can give him a turn around, this is Lyle's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you need it.